Hi, today I want to do a little experiment. I've made two different versions of the VOD50. One with high damping factor, the head behind me, and one with low damping factor, the combo. And I want you to tell me if you can hear a difference between the two. But before we start, I want to just say a few words about what damping factor is and how it ought to affect your tone. A simple model of an amplifier is just a constant gain voltage multiplier. It will produce an output of alpha times the input voltage regardless of the load it is driving. In reality though, an amplifier has some non-zero output impedance, although in some cases it can be close enough to zero that we don't have to worry about it. Here's a speaker response graph of the Jensen Tornado 100, the stock speaker of the VOD50 combo, which we'll be using in our experiment. Now when the speaker is driven by an amp with zero output impedance, the frequency response is given by the red curve. But the higher the output impedance of the amp, the more the speaker response gets modulated by the blue impedance curve, which has the tonal effect of scooping your mids around 300 Hz. This effect is very noticeable, and I demonstrated it in my video on negative feedback. The rising impedance at higher frequency is due to the inductance of the speaker's voice coil, and the low frequency impedance peak is due to the back EMF at the resonant frequency of the speaker. At the resonant frequency, the speaker requires the least energy to set the cone into motion, and the inertia of the system wants to keep it vibrating for a few cycles even after the signal to the speaker has ceased. The higher the output impedance of your amp, the less effective this back EMF is at damping the system at resonance. For this reason, the damping factor is defined simply as the nominal load impedance divided by the amp's output impedance. When the damping factor is low, say less than around 10, the inertia of the speaker system can cause overshoot of base frequencies, which results in a less defined, looser low end. A high damping factor should theoretically give tighter and more faithful bass. But given how low the resonant frequency is of a 12-inch guitar speaker like the Jensen Tornado, it's questionable whether damping factor is even audible in this context. And that's what we're going to investigate in this video. First, let's measure the output impedances of some amps. To do this, we'll load the amps with a resistive load and measure the voltage at the output. Then we'll do that again with a different load, and then we'll have two resistances and two voltages, and then we can plug those values into this formula and we'll have the output impedance. I'm going to use this dummy load set to a resistive value of 6.7 ohms. I can flick the switch to bring it down to 4 ohms. Those will be my two loads. Here's a 50 watt 6L6 amp with negative feedback. I'm running a 1 kHz sine wave through it and I'm measuring around 1 volt RMS across the 6.7 ohm dummy load. When I flick the switch, the voltage drops to 793 millivolts. If we plug these values into our formula, we calculate an output impedance of 4 ohms. Now here's a Fender Vibroverb reissue on the floor. This time when I flick the switch, the voltage drops to 738 millivolts. Plugging the readings again into our formula gives an output impedance of 8 ohms. Here's a Fender Deluxe Reverb reissue. This one has an output impedance of 24 ohms. Here's the same 6L6 amp as before, but with the negative feedback turned off. It has an output impedance of 285 ohms. Now here's the VOD50 combo. The output impedance measures 9 ohms. And finally the VOD50 head. The output impedance is 230 milli ohms, so that is very low. Let's put these values in a table and calculate the damping factor of each amp. As you can see, the damping factors range from 0.03 to 35, quite a big spread. So if we had two amps that were identical, but for the fact that one had high output impedance and the other didn't, then the one with high output impedance would have scooped mids compared to the other amp. And if we were just trying to determine what the sound of a high damping factor sounded like, 
uh, it would be kind of difficult to do that when we're also hearing a difference and such a big difference as well in frequency response. So what I did with the head here is it's although it has really low output impedance I've I've added a mid scoop to the preamp which mimics the mid scoop on the combo that it gets from the uh, high output impedance interacting with the speaker. So we can really just focus on the effect of damping on the speaker, you know, the quality of the bass. And we're not going to be, our, our judgment is not going to be clouded by this diff massive difference in frequency response. So let's check out the sound samples now. Now in the samples I'll be playing into the combo but I'll also be recording my direct signal into my computer and then I'll use that signal to reamp the head into the same speaker as the combo with the same mic position and everything so it'll be a proper comparison. So what did you think? Could you hear a difference between amp A and amp B? And if so, which one do you think has the low damping factor? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, found it interesting, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Check me out on Instagram at Rajani Amps. Check me out online at rajaniamps.com and I hope to see you next time.